Hey everyone, my name is Ashley. I'm the Director of Customer Success at Blackthorn, and today I'm going to go through the Entity Relationship Diagram for our Events app. So again, I'm going to go through this diagram in detail and discuss the relationship between the Payments and Events apps. Why is this so important? Well, it's important to understand what objects are being deployed in the Salesforce org and what they do, right? And understanding the relationship between the objects and understanding this will allow you to define what users should have access to through their profiles and permission sets, and then ultimately what licenses they should be assigned to. So here is our events diagram. As you'll see in the dark blue, we have our events objects. In the green is our payments objects. Um, to be a little bit more specific, these are our payments objects related to event functionality. Um, with our payments app on its own, we have many more objects and functionality um, than just what you're seeing here. And then the light blue is the Salesforce standard objects that we integrate with. The core objects of our events app are comprised of four objects, events, attendees, event items, and our event registration submission object. When I go back and I'm showing you all of these different boxes and objects and relationships, one way or another, they all flow through those four core objects. The other group of objects that I want to discuss is our event planner objects. So when it comes to an event, there's much more than just the detail of the event. There's sessions and staff that will be helping with the event, sponsors, so on and so forth. So the relationship that we made is a direct to the event object itself. So as you'll see, there are event lookups on every single one of these objects on the bottom. And then these objects also relate to um, a number of standard Salesforce objects. So for example, we have a speaker object that relates to contacts. So if you have a contact that is a, a speaker at more than just one event, you can actually grab the info from the contact and set it on the speaker when you're making that creation. Other pieces here too is um, we have some objects that relate specific to attendees. So for example, our session object, which relates directly to the event, also has sub objects that it's related to, for example, session attendee, session speaker, and those items again relate to either a standard Salesforce object or it will relate directly to the attendee. Um, the reason we have all of these relationships is so that you're able to reference any of this detail on either the stand, standard Salesforce object um, or referencing it on the attendee object, which is where most of the email communication will go out pertaining to that event. Um, and just a, a quick note too, I'm gonna to go back high level. We do have a few master detail relationships, but for the most part, we just have the standard lookup. Um, this way we don't run into any lock row errors, um, or at least there aren't as many just because we're not having to deal with, with that master detail relationship functionality. So the next piece I'm gonna talk about is our paid event object. So if you have a paid event, um, this is where we start connecting the event objects with the payment objects. So as you'll see, you can define an amount on an event item. And when this goes through the registration process, we will create an invoice and that invoice will have a line item with the associated amount. Um, when, if this was paid during the registration, you're gonna see an associated transaction, payment method from the attendee who checked out. And then also you have the ability to create an opportunity automatically. And then we do have some functionality around discount codes um, or eligibility codes based on the event, event item, and or a account. So a lot of options there. And again, as you'll see from the diagram, how they all relate to each other. So again, think about if my user is creating events and it's a paid events, do they also need access to the payments application to see this data? Awesome. And I included this slide to show a little bit of the object structure for one of our largest features, which is custom questions and surveys, right? So if you have any questions during checkout, post-checkout, post-event with sending out a survey, you'll see here how everything relates. So we make it really easy from when you're creating an initial form with all of your elements, meaning the different types of questions that you're gonna ask to the form submission and what it relates to. So on the left-hand side, you'll see I have a, a box this is essentially just identifying that the form submission has lookup fields to all of these objects 
on its on its record. Right, and so it makes it really easy to grab any of the submission answers and be able to relate it to any of these objects. Um, this is what we have out of the box. This doesn't mean that you can't obviously create your own lookup to a custom object or anything else to relate answers to. And that's it. This is a really quick video just explaining that. Um, in this video description, you will see a link to download our entity relationship diagram if you want to keep it on file. And if you have any questions, do you know how to reach us through our support form? Thank you.